This is a map of the weirdest town names in the United States, and it worries me. Whoever approved of Chicken Alaska? Throw them in jail. They don't deserve rights anymore. Just imagine being from Ding Dong, Texas, or Worms, Nebraska, or somebody being like, Oh, hey, where are you from? And you just have to be like, Okay. Oklahoma! Boring Oregon and Jackpot, Nevada kind of makes sense, but everything else here? Absolutely not. <laughs> they named it Little Canada! Then we have Why Not an Accident, the only two places I feel like I would want to visit, and then Smartata. That was on purpose, right? Adult jokes in kids' movies that you missed because you were a stupid, oblivious child. In the movie Ratatouille, Alfredo gets caught talking to Remy in the freezer, but he can't be like, oh yeah, I was talking to the rat, so he's like, oh, I'm just familiarizing myself with the vegetables. So Chef Skinner has to remind him that one can get too familiar with vegetables, if you know what I mean. Jimmy Neutron was a Nickelodeon show with too many adult jokes to count, but by far my favorite one was when Jimmy's dad came out as a little bit fruity because he sat on a banana when he was seven, and of course, it changed his life. As a kid watching The Road to El Dorado, I was like, oh my god, Shell and Tulio got caught kissing, that's crazy, but as an adult, I know that she is nowhere near his face. When a female lion is in heat, she wants to have sex 20 to 40 times a day, and if the male lion can't keep up, she'll resort to biting his balls until he does. I mean, look at that face. Most spiders shed an exoskeleton, so if you ever find a dead spider, it's probably just a husk and there's a slightly larger spider somewhere nearby. We really don't give fish enough credit, like, it's been proven that they can learn to recognize their owners, like, they can see outside of that aquarium. Which is why some countries have actually banned the circular fishbowl because they find it cruel to distort the fish's perspective. So there used to just be early birds and night owls, but new research shows that there's actually four different chronotypes, and knowing which one you are can really be helpful with managing your time and your sleep. So about 10% of the population are what we call dolphins, okay? These people wake up super early, go to bed really late, most often are diagnosed with insomnia because of this, but they're the really intelligent, scatterbrained, creative types. Then there's the other 15% of the population that we call lions, okay? These people wake up super early and they're just ready for the day. They're productive, but by like 12 to 3, they're just tired and they're done. Then there's another group that we call wolves, okay? These people hate the mornings and waking up. They're very introspective and introverted and very creative, but just at nighttime. And then we have the majority. 55% of people are bears. These people are able to get eight hours of sleep and be fine, be productive in the mornings, be fine at night, you know? Like, they're happy-go-lucky, and I'm jealous of them. Let me know which chronotype you are so I can start giving you some advice. This is the cochineal beetle. When you take cochineal beetles and boil them, dry them, and grind them up, you get something called carmine, which is used as a food dye, and you've probably eaten it more than any other bug ever. I'm talking about Skittles, ketchup, yogurt, meat, red lipstick, and your strawberry-flavored Starbucks drinks. Pretty much any food or product that uses a red dye is red from the blood of the cochineal beetle. I'm uncomfy. Elon Musk's dad, Arrow Musk, is 75 years old, and he met his current baby mama when he was in his 40s. The only problem with that is she was three at the time, and he was her stepdad. This is Elon Musk's mom, Mae Musk. She's been modeling for over 50 years now, and she makes me want to eat a gallon of sunblock. Elon Musk also has a brother. His name is Kimball Musk, and he really likes to wear cowboy hats. I personally think that he's bald like Elon Musk used to be, but just didn't have the Daddy Musk money to fix it, so... Yeah. Elvis Presley was actually a natural blonde, but he just started dyeing his hair black when he was a teenager. In the movie Wild Wild West, there's a hot tub scene where you can very clearly see Will Smith's balls. Samuel L. Jackson has a stutter, and he said the one thing that helped him with it, especially with acting, was saying motherfucker. George Foreman has 12 kids, and he named all five of his boys George Foreman. He even named one of his girls Georgette Foreman. Tom Cruise has a tooth in the middle of his face, and it's bothered me ever since somebody pointed it out. Lucid dreaming is where you become aware that you're in a dream, and you can start to control 
everything. It's very fun and here's how to do it. You need to start building up your dream recall because what's the point of lucid dreaming if you won't remember it anyway? So what you need to start doing is keeping a journal by your bed and every morning when you wake up, write as much about a dream as you remember. Throughout your day, start performing reality checks and look for abnormalities. They can be anything from pinching yourself to trying to touch your thumb to your pinky. Nothing weird here, not in a dream. But if you get into the habit of doing this, you will start doing it in your dreams and realize that you are asleep. Before you go to sleep, it also helps to drink some apple juice because this is going to make your dreams way more vivid. And then as you fall asleep, just repeat to yourself, I will control my dreams. By doing this, you're going to encourage your brain to be aware as you fall asleep and therefore you should be able to lucid dream and do whatever you want. Get your mind out of the gutter. Here's some actually useful iPhone hacks that you didn't even know you needed. When I see people edit their home screen, what I usually see is somebody grabs an app and then move it over and then they grab another app and they move it over. But a way more effective way to do this is grab an app and then just tap all the other apps that need to go over there with it. And just move it, place it, and you're done. If somebody ever takes your phone and tries to use your face to unlock the face ID, all you have to say is, hey Siri, whose phone is this? It's gonna freeze it up, forcing you to have to use the password. If you ever feel like your iPhone just isn't loud enough for you, go to settings, and then music, and then under EQ, hit the late night option. This works by making loud sounds quiet and amplifying the quiet sounds, making the whole thing sound a lot better. One way you can make money is by going to your local thrift store or Goodwill, taking pictures of the things, and then posting them on Craigslist for a higher price. If somebody wants to buy something from you, just go to the store, buy it, sell it to them. But if the store already sold it, you can just tell the person on Craigslist that you already sold it. Always tell your job that you have kids, even if you don't, because for some reason, employers tend to treat people with families better than people who are just single. And then that way, if you ever have to get out of a shift, you can just tell them that your kid is sick or something. If you ever gift somebody a gift card, make sure that you write down that card's information. That way, a year or two later, you can check the card's balance. And if they haven't used it yet, just use it yourself. It's not like they're going to know. Do you want to know if your friends have good intentions or what your significant other actually thinks about you? Straight up, ask them, hey, what do you think about me? You're probably going to get a very quick, basic, positive response of, oh, you're so nice, funny, and sweet. This is where the fun happens. Now you're going to ask them, well, what makes me so nice, funny, and sweet? This is going to force them to dig deeper. The level of specifics and reasoning behind the basic answers reveals how much this person has thought about you in depth. But if they struggle to come up with answers, that usually means that they see you as a surface level person, which implies that they have bad intentions being in this relationship with you. Good luck. Do you want to give off psychopath vibes? Next time you go to put on chapstick, use both hands. And bonus points if you can make prolonged eye contact with somebody while doing so. Draw your S's from the bottom up. If you do this unironically, stay away from me. Next time you walk through a door and there's somebody kind of behind you, instead of doing the socially acceptable thing of holding the door open for them, close it and walk away. When you make a bag of microwavable popcorn, that little slit at the bottom is used to shake out the kernels in the bag. Look at this. So many kernels. When you wear a bathrobe, you're not supposed to tie the rope around the back. Take it out and tie it through the front. It tightens so much more easily this way. If you store a cut avocado in some water in the fridge, it'll last two to three days longer than if you just left it in the fridge. Psychology tricks that work on kids that I know work because I'm the oldest of too many goddamn children. Kids are people and people don't like being told no, but kids are kind of stupid, so try the butt yes method. Hey, Bella, you want to play a game? No. Versus. Hey, Bella, you want to play a game? Yes, but I have to finish this video first. Okay. The next time you catch your kid lying, just tell them that you knew that they were lying because it was written on their tongue. If they're telling the truth, they'll show it. If not, they'll hide it. Cruz, did you drink my soda? No. Show me your tongue. Show me. Now I know you're lying. Just tell your kid that you're allergic to whining and start sneezing when they do. But I want it. What do you, what do you want? I want it. <laughs> Psychology tricks to make somebody nervous or give them butterflies when you're in a conversation with them. Say their name, okay? You know when you're in a conversation with somebody who's new and cute and they say your name and you're just like... <laughs> You can do that to somebody else. There's a reason why Rihanna wrote a song about it. It's hot, 
just do it. Mention something they've told you about themselves, what school they went to, what kind of foods they like. It can literally be anything. But if you bring that back up in conversation, they're gonna be like, aw, they remembered something I've said. Do I remember anything they've said? Straight up, just check them out in conversation. It's not that hard. Just do the classic like up down look, but more seductive like, and they're gonna be nervous as shit thinking that you're interested in them, which might just make them interested in you. Insane history facts that school just didn't teach you. In 17th century Europe, it was very common for nannies to give young and teenage boys of the house handies to help them sleep at night. We used to have a plant called Silphium that was an extremely effective birth control. Unfortunately, the ancient Romans just had way too much sex and the plant went extinct. Tampons were first invented in the 18th century to help stop the bleeding from bullet wounds. And they were like, okay, to help with the pain, let's put a little bit of our general anesthetic on the tampon. Except it was cocaine! They made cocaine tampons! And by the time women started using tampons, you know, for their periods, they kept the cocaine. They're like, yeah, it helps with period cramps. But like, why don't we have this anymore? Like, logically, I know why we don't, but as a person who experiences period cramps, bring it back!